Hi everyone, today I'm making a video per a customer request. I love getting customer requests, so if you ever have one, please feel free to let me know um, what you'd like to see on a video. So this customer asked for how um, instructions on how I made this card many years ago. It was um, She found it on Pinterest, and I happen to still have one, amazingly. I have a box of birthday cards, and I go through them pretty regularly, and I amazingly still had it. I think I kept it because I wanted to remember this technique and then I forgot about it. So I'm glad that she reminded me of it. It was back before I started making videos so there's no video on it. And so she asked for some instruction and I thought I might as well make a video. So it's a doily mask is the technique and I use um, a pretty little doily that has some nice detail and an aqua painter to get this fun background effect. So this doily is an older style. The newer ones are slightly smaller. And um, I'm going to show you how I got that effect. Here's the newer one that I made today. These two. It uses the same technique, so you can decide that you want to add a lot of doily detail, like I did here. Or you could go more minimal, like I did here. And then when you're done, you are left with a pretty doily, and you can use that as a background. So let's go ahead and get started. The base of the card uses, um, or not the base, but the main image panel is using shimmery white cardstock. And the reason is that shimmery white cardstock can hold up to water, and um, a whisper white cardstock is just not going to give you that same quality. It's going to maybe pill a little bit. The water's going to do different things on the paper, and this is a nicer cardstock for watercolor and um, you can also use watercolor paper that has a bumpier texture and you may not get as many of the pretty lace details on the bumpier texture of watercolor like these little um, spaces here might not be as um, intense so it depends on what look you're going for and maybe try a couple different cardstocks and see what you like and uh, or just go with the shimmery white which is my favorite <laughs> so I cut this piece at three and three quarters by five and I'm using the newer style doilies, which like I mentioned, are a little smaller than the older in my original cart. I don't happen to have any more of those doilies, but you can see that it's a little bit smaller and the details are different. It's also a different material. The other doilies were a little more, I don't know what, maybe more like a paper towel almost, a little more cottony. And these have a, a little slicker of a surface. So it's gonna give you a little, little different, but it, it all worked out the same and you're going to use an aqua painter. Now this card used, I believe it was Pool Party and Wild Wasabi. And I decided to use some new colors. On this one, I'm gonna use Fresh Fig, Berry Burst, and Lemon Lime Twist. It's a really fun color combination and I can't seem to stop using it. The next thing you need is an aqua painter. Now, if you don't have an aqua painter, I, see, I really love them. I use them constantly. It's a great tool to have. I would suggest getting one. They come in a two-pack, so you get one with a smaller tip and one with a slightly fatter tip. And they're just a great thing to have on hand. I use them constantly, and they travel well. So if you like to take a little craft on the go, I, um, I like to bring a little watercolor palette, nice kind of paint on the go. These are a great thing to have, and um, I just love them. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to use an aqua painter. If you don't have one, you can use a regular uh, paintbrush and some water. So you've got your doily and your shimmery white cardstock, and you're just going to take your ink pad and press to get a little bit of ink in the lid of your pad. I started with the lightest color first, just so it doesn't bleed as much into my other colors, but you're going to do a lot of different... Um, colors here and back and forth so you're gonna have to clean your brush eventually so I did not tape it down or stick it down or use any kind of adhesive to this I like the look of the slightly messy you know so it's not perfect you don't have the perfect lace it's obviously watercolor and it's obviously not perfect and that's okay that's the look of this card so you kind of have to go with that all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and you don't want your brush too wet Okay, because then it kind of goes underneath the doily. So kind of maybe keep a paper towel on hand. And if you feel like your brush is a little too wet, you can dry it off a little bit. Okay, 
you can decide how much of a certain color to use. There's no rule here. As you can see, I'm kind of doing more of a pouncing. I'm, I'm not rubbing, I'm not going back and forth, I'm pouncing. And that's because I want to get it in these little dots, but I don't want my brush bristles to go under the little detail of the lace. So I think I'm, I'm done with this color for now. And so what you do to clean your brush, you can just kind of go like this. If you feel like it's a really dark color and you want to make sure it's off, you can give your paint brush here, your aqua painter, a little squeeze, which will bring some water from the barrel down to the tip. You can see it's formed a little droplet there. And um, make sure that that drop comes off clear. It did. And then you just keep going. It's kind of nice. You don't have to have a big cup of messy, dirty water. So same thing. You're going to squeeze your lid and open it up. And now I'm switching to Berry Burst. I'm not going to lift up the doily. And it's nice to keep it down because it's going to be nice and uniform that way. Because I squeezed to clean, my brush is a little wet, so I'm going to get that off. I'm going to go back to pouncing. Okay, so that is Berry Burst. Now I'm going to go with Fresh Fig. Now for the rest of the video, I am going to speed it up so you don't have to watch a very, very long video. <laughs> but I will tell you about anything important that I've changed or done differently. As I go along, I'll stop it and, and tell you. Okay, I'm going to stop for a moment and I'm going to let it sit. Now, it's just going to have to sit for just a tiny second. I just like it to kind of soak in and dry. And then I'm going to carefully lift it up. And there I've got a really pretty lace detail watercolor. Now again, it's not perfect. But that's okay. Now you can use the same piece of doily again if you want to. It does get muddier because see some has leaked to the back. So I kind of use a new spot on the doily for another section. This time I want to go a little further over, like maybe this, more of a full doily. So I'm going to start on the side that's dry. It kind of lets this part dry a little bit while I'm working. And then I can go back with the same colors again in a moment when this is a little bit drier. Now it's okay if you need to use a second doily because like I said in the end you're not wasting these doilies. They're going to be really pretty. They're going to be colored really nicely and you can use them on a card. So go ahead and use a second doily if you feel like your first doily has gotten too wet. So I'm going to speed up as I pounce again and um, I'll stop if I feel that I have to say something important. <laughs> Okay, I'm all done. So remember that the motion is more of a pounce, which is like an up and down motion, kind of like this. And uh, you'll be good. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second and look at how pretty the doily is. Looks like I didn't get any ink there. So you can go ahead and just you know, find a spot that didn't get any and add it. And then you've got a really pretty doily that you can use on another project. So we'll allow that to dry. Okay, so all I did from here is I mounted it onto some cardstock. I think I will show you how to get, notice on this one, these are very different. It's the same exact doily, but there's a lot of white space. If you want some more white space, what I did there is I only pounced along the edges. So that's a different look too. Now you can also use a sponge and sponge around and you'll get a cleaner look but um, I like the watercolor, the bleeding kind of watercolor look that this gives. But try it, try some sponging and see what you think about that too. That's a whole nother look and it, they're both beautiful. So that's a fun way to use your doily. 
and it's another little mask that you have. You don't even know you have a little stencil, but you do. And um, I'm going to make this into a thank you card. I always send so many thank you cards to my customers online and in uh, classes. So I'm going to make a little thank you card. This is just a little scrap of shimmery white cardstock, so my backgrounds match. And I think it's about three inches long by three quarters of an inch thick. And I have a wonderful thank you stamp set called Thankful Thoughts. There are several really pretty thanks stamp sets in the catalog, but I like this fun little handwritten thanks or this more elegant thank you. It's a nicer handwritten look. So I'm going to go with that one since I did the more written look at that one. So I'm going to go with this kind of pretty thank you instead of thanks. Ink it up and I'll put it on my scrap. There, that's a nice font, don't you think? And then I just took my triple banner punch and flagged the ends. Now the punch is made to cut an inch and then an inch and a half and then two inches but I often use it for smaller sizes so I took a ruler and a sharpie and added some more sizes to the back. So I have a three-quarter inch on the back of mine all set to go. There, not cute. So I have this nice little thank you, and I mounted it onto some of the beautiful berry burst cardstock and fresh fig. So this one has fresh fig as the main base and berry burst. I'm going to do the opposite on this one just because I had leftover cardstock in that size. So you've got a regular size, standard size card base, and then I have this little mat piece. It's four and five and a quarter inches. I'm going to go ahead and mat this. Now the watercoloring makes the paper curl more than normal, so I'm going to make sure to put that down with a strong adhesive. Normally I just do corners or little sections, but I'm going to go all the way across with my fast fuse and just make sure that I get especially all the way to the edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and mat it right onto my fresh fig. and that'll stay down really nicely. And then this ribbon that I'm using is so pretty. It's a new ribbon. You know, in the past we've usually only gotten one style of ribbon for new in colors, and, um, and it came in all the new in colors. This time we've got several. So this is a crinkled seam, bind, seam binding ribbon, which is nice because it lays really flat. It, it can go into a regular envelope without a huge knot, and then you don't have to worry about extra postage. But there's also this one here, which is called a finely woven ribbon, which also lays really flat. It's really nice. I used it on this one. So there's several choices for in-color ribbon this year. I'm going to go with this one because I cut it earlier. And then where you want to put it, you can decide. Well, if you this doily you don't like the most, which doily do you like the best? Which one do you want to see the most? And play around with that. And then tie your bow. Okay, and then if you want to make your thank you stand up just a tiny bit so it's in line with your bow, you can go ahead and pop it up on some dimensionals. There you go, so that is the doily mask card. And here is the other version of how to do the doily. And here is a way to use your doily. I'm going to point out a couple of things. This is some really pretty lemon lime twist ombre ribbon. It's new also, lovely for the in colors. I did the same little thing with my thank you and the doily, and I just added a little scrap of gold glimmer paper that I happen to have laying around on my desk, and I used an embossing folder on the back to give it a little texture, but this is so fast to put together. You can use some scraps that you have and, and just throw that together, and it's a really pretty thank you card. And here is the original that 
sparked the request. So you can try so many different color combinations, whatever your favorite color combinations are. So I hope that you enjoyed watching. I hope if you have a request that you'll go ahead and ask me um, and maybe I can work on it. Hope you subscribe to my channel and like it. Please stop by my blog, bathspapercuts.com to shop. And I have a frequent buyer rewards program. So you can pick up a new pack of these really pretty doilies and some of the new in colors and in color ribbons. There's so much there. And please feel free to email me. Um, I have a little contact me button right there on my blog as well and it has my email address. The email address is better than just commenting straight on the blog because sometimes I get a do not reply and, and if you don't leave your specific email address I don't have one to reply specifically to you. I just have to reply on the blog and you may not notice that I've done so. So feel free to email me. I'm happy to get emails and I'm happy to do requests. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.